My name is Michael and this is Use Vim. Today we're going to talk about installing the Vim Go package for debugging Go programs. So what I'm showing here is that I've installed uh, Vim 8.1 on Fedora 28 and I'm in my home directory here with no existing Vim configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a .vim folder and a package uh, directory with a unique name and the start folder under that and that's where I'm going to place the package. I'm changing into that directory and I'm cloning the package and um, because it's in the start folder it will automatically start when Vim starts. Uh, right there I just generated the help documentation for Vim Go with help tags space and then the capital word all and now I'm going to prove that Vim Go was installed by looking at the Vim Go help here. If you want to learn uh, more about how to navigate around the help, check out my video on help. We are going to install Go on this VM. So I'm just pulling this URL from um, the main Go web page and just uh, using wget to pull go to the server here. Um, it doesn't take quite too long on this uh, VM connected to the internet. Alright, now that Go is downloaded, I'm going to follow the directions on the Go website and install Go to um, user local. So I'm extracting it to that user local directory using tar right here. And you can see there's a lot of different directories and source files that are included in the uh, standard binary. Uh, if we just look at the first level of the uh, user local go uh, vim uh, go directory, we can see just all the top level directories like the docs and packages and source and test for installing go. I'm also going to add uh, go to my path on the shell so that I can run the command go um, from whatever I want. So I'm just adding that to my bash rc and then I'm sourcing my bash rc to make it active and you can see right there my path now is uh, user local go bin so I can use all the go uh, commands. Next, I'm just going to make a little bit of a program here to test that Go is fully installed and working. So I got a little bit of a typo here. Uh, I need to make all those directories at once, and I just changed that directory. Uh, you can see here when I open that hello.go that it was automatically populated. That's from the VimGo package, so you can change this actually. What I'm going to do is I just have a program, a uh, small hello world program on the clipboard that I'm going to use instead. So I'm just putting it in there. It's essentially the same as that pre-made template provided with uh, Vim Go. And I'm going to compile the program and then just execute it. There it is. It's compiled as hello. And uh, just run hello and there it is. Hello world. Okay, so Go is installed and the Vim Go package is installed. Um, but this VimGo package has a bunch of different um, things associated with it. So if you run go install binaries, when you first install VimGo, it will go out and pull all of these uh, various tools that it's uh, using to do things from GitHub for you. So that's what's happening here is it's, I'm going out to GitHub and pulling all these uh, tools that the Vimco package uses. Uh, for more details about that, again, you can go to the to the help menu that we compiled it or that we built at the start. And all those tools get installed to the um, Go bin path. So those are all the tools that I just installed. Many of them. Next we're going to install the debugger, which was the main thing I wanted to show in this video. 
So one of the Go debuggers is call is this utility called Delve, and that's the utility that's gonna we're gonna plug into Vim here. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna load up that program uh, that I had just used Vim Hello, and I'm gonna just modify it slightly, uh, adding a couple of variables before my print statement, and then just you know printing those variables um, using the same printf statement. So now that the file is saved, let's uh, execute it. So to start the debugger, you first set a break breakpoint somewhere in the program, and you can see there on the left the little blue arrow that's setting the breakpoint. Now we do go uh, debug start to actually start the debugger. And there you can see it's working. And what it does is it loads up these different windows by default. So on the left there is the stack trace, uh, and then on the lower left is the variable declarations, and then on the lower right is uh, any log messages from Delve itself. So you can see there that the variable what up and the variable Mike D have values of hello and world at this point in the program execution, which is um, what I've done up there with the program. So the debugger is working. Uh, those windows that are created are just normal Vim windows. So what I'm going to do here is just show you that uh, it looks a little bit different if you resize your terminal, and you can also control the way all this looks with um, settings and you know window configs that uh, you can find out a little bit more about windows with my uh, Windows um, Use Vim video, or you can read about them in the in the documentation, but you can basically adjust the way this looks is the point I'm trying to get across here, um, because when you just look at it um, in the sizing that I, I used to make it easy to view on YouTube, it, it didn't quite look good from a debugging standpoint. So just Vim Windows here, that's what Vim Go is doing for you, plugging into Delve, and um, yeah, there it is.